ladies and gentlemen, well, let us throw my way Owen's into on. the draft. And here that we go. It is the Grand Jesus. Finals VG Gaming versus TNC. Here it is. Best of five. Who is going to win this major and more than likely secure mm. themselves a spot at TI already? Second place possibly could be good enough, but mm -hmm. you want this win. You want the full points. Oh, yeah. You want the big you money as well. It, it's Wait, there's money in this paper? A million dollar to tournament cap. Million dollars. What are you guys talking about this tournament? The draft. What are we talking about? This we're tournament? in a freaking draft right now. <laughs> no, we're, we're still doing the paper plates. Okay, well, <laughs> yours is bad. I can already tell. Owens is definitely better. What? <laughs> Look Owen, at him. Owens is, is more tightly constructed. That doesn't mean he's going to go farther. Okay. No, mine's going to do backflips. Mine's, oh, mine's a stump play. play. Oh, yeah. well, then we're competing <laughs> on different <laughs> things. Different. <laughs> All right, when, when, when they're done no. constructing their great planes, we will check and see who is flying the best. All right, and so they get the most speaking time on this panel. <laughs> 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 or the least. It depends what they want. <laughs> now, uh, Void does get banned out, so uh, Owen, what you're saying, there's still yep. Earthshaker Morph in the Band pool, the void. but Void's gone. There goes um, the Naga. I wonder if uh, Vici Gaming is... Have they played Naga Siren so far at this tournament? They, I believe they, I thought we looked it up and they had played it once, but I, I could be wrong. All right, mine's, mine's, my plane is sloppy, but it's done. But it's not fair, because Owen and, Owen and I went for different things. Owen went for a stunt plane. His is going to do the, the loops. I don't, I cool. don't, actually, I don't know what mine's going to do. I've not, fl I've not flown a plane in quite a while, you know. Same, yeah, same. it's been a bit. Yeah. Been a minute. So if they don't ban Earthshaker or Morphling, do you just take it as TNC at this point? Owen? It's if a five-game series. I'd say yes. give it a shot in game one. Yeah. Give it, give it, a, give it a go. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Again, they drafted it against IG, I think, yep. for a reason. It's not like they they were just like, oh, this doesn't work against VG Gaming, but it'll work against other people. They banned a the Night Stalker, which I think makes Earthshaker Morphling stronger. By the way, uh, Night Stalker I think is quite good because his the safe lane tempo of Night Stalker is quite good. You've got this AoE silence that is really pesky for Morphling. Uh, I think... Mm. Yeah. We'll see what they so do, though. Are you guys ready to throw your planes yeah, and decide sure. who the great... All right, we're going to get it going, then. Who's mm. first? Or are we doing the same time? I don't know. We'll do one at a time. All right. Okay, Just go. I'll see what sort of flight route I can get. Here we go. Okay. Well, it's over uh -oh. here now. <laughs> Very well crafted. Cap, can it make yeah. it farther than negative one feet? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Easy. Look at it. Lands Easy. down there. A great throw. And yes, you are. Maybe, maybe I'm a bad camera, flyer. Go on, you try for a mine. It's but, already uh, gone. But it's, me, I mean, uh, Owens, Owens is supposed to do some well, backflips. He's not really stuff. doing anything. <laughs> 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 so, Paper Crafter, congratulations, Cap. Thank you. Now you have to give me the next two picks from VG. Go, oh, no. I didn't know that was going to be the reward. Well, they're already out. All right. Omni um, Rubik. Okay. Kind of no a, a passive yeah. opening, more so mm. than we've seen before. Omni Knight. Omni Knight's one of those here. OD? Been very OD, weird. it is. Uh, the Omni Knight. I think uh, when you have Marana already, you're thinking about OD. When the uh, enemy team picks Omni, yeah. you're going, oh, this is this is an OD. It's an OD. We're definitely yeah. picking OD here because OD is so good against Omni lineups. You just can't depend on his Guardian Angel. You feel like your sustain is actually playing against you in some ways as OD continues to beat down on you. You don't have, out of your offlane, you don't have an aggressive uh, blink stunner. And that's something that OD yep. hates. He hates be having pressure put on him. He wants the, the battle to be nice and clean and neat and right in front of him so he can keep on throwing those orbs. I love the sniper ban as well. Even though it's a hero we don't see, sure. it, it, it is just, it is that good against OD. You know, I don't sort of care how, how sort of, where you put the, this hero in terms of a tier, but in terms of that lane matchup, yeah. it's maybe it's not high. as bad as like Armel having to play TA against a Huskar, but I'd say it's it's kind of close. Like it really is a just, you don't want to do it. You want to play OD, you don't want, you, you can't, Sniper gets out of here. You got to get rid of him. And you're talking about it not being a popular pick. I mean, probably the only person who actually picks it regularly is Ori, so. Yeah, you know, oh yeah, sure. No, yeah, Ori, in some of the guy. previous yeah, exactly. season, well, Ori sort of, it, it was what, yeah. the Ori, the Lena, the Ori Sniper, exactly. and uh, the Ori, what was it, was it the Ori Conker? Ori's Pugna. Oh, the exactly. Ori Storm, right. He sure. used to be on his yeah. storm. He yeah. was uh, uh, he was amazing. Yeah, so I, I think uh, you ban Pugna here, though, if you're TNC. I d I um, just haven't seen it much, but at least yeah. anytime you see an OD, I don't think it's a bad ban, right? No. Yeah. It's just never a bad no. ban. But the problem is then, 
I guess you're not that scared of Nick's assassin because you already see Rubik oh, Omni, so maybe yeah. you're like, they're not going to do a five. Well, exactly. Like, you, yeah. as you said, it's sure it's strong against the OD, but a Nick's Rubik Omni, that <laughs> doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, please pick the <laughs> Nick's assassin. Go <laughs> ahead. Be our guest. Yeah. yeah. You could do like a TA Dro Strat for Vici Gaming. I don't know um, how good Dro Strats are against OD, yeah. but I thought they were good. I'm not 100% on it, though. You see the crowd there has filled up. Ready to see this grand finals, yeah. man. I can't believe it. We are at the end of the very first major. Yeah. And it's kind of funny, right? These two teams, I would say they were at least two of the top three teams in most people's predictions, and they weren't wrong. They're they're here right now. Uh, VT Gaming did play a game of Naga Sirens, so hey, I, I hope they, they run one. it back somewhere in this tournament. They played it against Alliance in the groups. I feel it might just be permanently banned by both teams, right? Because these are the yeah. two teams that like play it more than everyone else, too. I think uh, you're very scared of TNC's Naga Siren. Sure. I think they showed something different that nobody has really shown me anyway with Naga Siren. Like the way that they uh, played with it at Hamburg, <sighs> the aggressive safe lane cutting. Keeper well. of the lane. Mm. Yeah, Vici yeah. Gaming bans the drow themselves. Obviously, an OD Marani on their side. Two heroes that benefit yeah. greatly from it. And they uh, just take the Coddle, that team fight. Yeah, I like Coddle a lot because it does give you that long-range catch. And it's... Uh, I always think of, like, uh, any of these things that you have to hit, OD really doesn't like because every right-click that comes from him is so valuable. Yeah, You want to be hitting heroes. Right, so that, that will o wisp is really destructive. I think the, the same sort of idea is there for those Undyings and Phoenixes and those sort of deals. Yeah. And also, of course, just any sort of like blind mechanics against OD, anything that's going to make him miss his hits, yep. it's just so disruptive to play against before he gets, before he gets that BKB. And, and even then, you know, it's still going to be timings around it because as an OD, you get the BKB, you're never going to want to buy any true strike items. You're not going to get an MKB or a Bloodthorn, so <laughs> it's going to gonna be annoying. Love it. Girl gets put on the cam. The guy instantly pushed her out of the way. I'm on camera, <laughs> mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, honey. You guys ever been on camera at like an event? Like, just yeah, like it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, I'm not from a yeah, I, 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 get, event. I get paid for it as well. You know, it's <laughs> kind of my career. Are you uh, doing this for free, Grant? Or <laughs> wait, we're on camera. Nice oh God, why didn't Cap? I dress up? Why didn't you guys tell me? I thought this was radio. <laughs> All right, well, Grant just, I hate Grant you guys. just does these funny faces just <laughs> because. That's what he does. That's just all what the time. I did. <laughs> no, the Undying, I like that they showed March talking, and then right when they do that, they pick Undying, which March, uh, I mean, people <laughs> still play this hero, but he's the guy who's just been playing it the most. Yeah. yeah. He's a little bit like uh, Vada in that regard. Yeah. And that you kind of know yeah. what five positions he's going to be playing for the most part. And this Undying, I mean, it has kind of fallen off a little bit. It's still good, right? You throw the tombstone down, you have an area you can fight on, but the problem is, is it as good of an area as the Keeper of the Light ulti? Does it really, like, it's kind of a very strange interaction. They're like, who wants to fight in that area? Probably the Keeper of the Light still, because you can kill the tombstone. It's pretty hard to kill the Will-O-Wisp. TA, uh, uh, I think you are always okay with this matchup, and then you have the Aegis, like you're going to be looking to take an early Roshan, this is the hero that is able to blink and put pressure on the OD, you're even able to go late game. Then you're going to have the classic OD uh, Legion Commander duo, mm. The they both have a save for each other, Legion Commander feels a lot better being able to go for duels, knowing that OD can either drop the hammer to finish off the duel, so you can go ahead and uh, press the attack yourself automatically, yeah. or yep. you can imprison the Legion Commander if she's in trouble and then just beat on the hero that's being uh, dueled. There's a lot of options that you have with this And it's this good duo. setup for the arrows, right? Like both these, uh, yeah. obviously yeah. the Astral and the Duel, pretty much guaranteed arrows, which is always good. Because yeah. you don't have one from your Undying. That's the one thing. Your five does not have any disabled. <laughs> they man the Morphling, so they are scared of the... Just the core morphling, no earth shaker even. Yeah, I would you be scared at all of no. uh, TNC doing a swerve on you and going uh, mid mid uh, Huskar and then side lane OD? I, I oh, would and get a bit of revenge <laughs> for yesterday. Revenge. I'd love to I see mean, that. I was thinking of that, and I was like, well, who do you like? You can do I mean, safe lane they, OD. I mean, it's not pick, great, but I don't think it's good enough. But it may be I worth it if you can get that Huskar TA mid. We saw how like how much that game was just over because of that mid lane matchup. When, uh, uh, what's BG your timing then when you have a Husker and an OD? Like they're playing on two different timings, right? I I, I, I was trying to think about it, mm -hmm. and then I'm just like, you. 
that's why they felt confident in picking the TA, right? Because they already saw the OD. They're like, we can't get Huskard. But yeah. Well, that's the thing. They could. Yeah, yeah. they could. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't think a team like TNT I don't would know. do I that. I don't think Safe Lane OD is as bad as, like, Safe Lane Ember. And some teams were doing really? Safe Lane Ember. I think Safe Lane Ember is better than oh, OD. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd happily take a safe lane OD if it means I've got a Huskar against the TA mid. You know? okay. I think I think it could it be, could, it could it, be it a could possibility. But the thing is, then it, they don't have last pick. What if they pick Huskar and they send the TA <laughs> to the side lane yeah, and yeah, then right. get a Huskar counter? <laughs> you know, the yeah. endless amount of counters while well, they take a CK. No. Um, so no more Huskar. Uh, nah. CK, a kind of fat. How would you consider CK? He's not like a late late game carry, right? He's kind of this. No, I'm gonna no. get like Midas, Armlet, yeah. Heart kind of guy, and exactly. own then. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he wants to go super late, but Definitely you not. can go you very mind. late game with this TNC lineup. I I liked Lycan before for Vici gaming. Uh, Real fast. I don't know if that Chaos Knight. What you can get out of the safe lane to address him so much? Yeah. There's like you could do. Yeah, what does Eurus go Safe for? Lane. Well, you don't want to do Bristleback because of OD, right? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think you can't really do the big tanky, tanky sort of carries unless they're, you know, build around magic community, getting BKBs early. You, you really have to think about, you, you can't do something that this OD is going to be able to punish and jug, yeah. yeah. So someone that's going to have that, that built in magic community, you're able to sort of dance around it. Oops. Still not necessarily that, that carry that comes out and you're like, whoa, you know what I mean? It's They got us. Yeah. yeah. It's very similar. I mean, to me, this game looks like Vici Gaming. If they are if they win the laning phase, they're pushing uphill 20 to 25 it's minutes in. It's going to be tough. Well, that's the thing as well, because can you? I don't know if I like Jug against a CK, you know what I mean? Yeah. Doesn't CK sort of across the board have a lot of reasons to to feel better than yeah, maybe maybe until the ultra damage. late game right when this jug is like no. six solid but I, I think for the most part like the mid game fight CK is right. just going to have that edge I think it's more about the tempo it brings much like how the bristleback pick was picked by uh, was it EG um, it's more about the tempo that it provides you necessarily the the hero matchups I think it's about being able to uh, play fast in this game adds more team fight to your roster. Mm -hmm. um, you do have, like, S Chaos Knight has, say, his, like, level 20 talent where he pieces, pierces magic immunity, but you've always got an Omni Knight behind you, so that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm not the biggest fan of this no, jug. I wish you, you, they you picked, you've I honestly wish they'd pick Lycan, but. Yeah, I know, I'd, uh, because you've also picked, like, the jug into Legion. And I think KP's yeah. like, all right, well, we're going to be able to have that lockdown free Brave Fury. Like, there's going to be these fights, right, where, if like the OD's going on the jug, he's gonna be like, well, I better spin my way out of here. And then suddenly KP's in and he's dueling him, and the jug's just, just gonna die. I think a lot of this game is gonna be about Ori and his mid matchup. You've got uh, Omni Knight versus Chaos Knight, which can go okay, but I think more likely Legion does better against Jug than the other matchup. Yeah. Uh, so I think a lot of it is gonna be about Ori. Uh, they need to be able to get this early Roshan. Got to take it in the first like 15, 20 minutes. TNC's lineup is slow. Yeah, it's, it's very slow, right? You've got you've got no big playmaker in your first like 15 minutes of the game. I doubt mm -hmm. KP is going to be rushing Blink Dagger, but even then, that doesn't necessarily make you a big playmaker, especially against all this early game yeah. Vici gaming. TNC is going to have to do, I think, a fair amount of split pushing into like five man balling on a high ground and that sort of thing. All right, thank you for that. It is now going to be the grand finals of the best of five. It's TNC versus Vici Gaming. Get some hype and let's go see with Lyrical and Trent. Oh, thank you so much, Grant and me, oh my, Trent. Grand finals. I think a lot of people were expecting these two teams to be the ones that are here, Vici Gaming versus TNC. Yeah. And already off to the races as yeah, we're getting they're, started. Uh, right into it, down to the bounty rooms. And uh, well, it looks like it'll just be a little bit of a trading back and forth here. Of course, Marge very happy to try and take some stacks on the old Undyne to get things going. But uh, they'll probably give them the respect and just back it up. But uh, that's a... Uh, Coddle and TA, last time I saw it was TNC doing this, where they were able to like solo Roche with the constant chakra, giving the meld over and over to keep refreshing the minus armor. So we'll have to see if they're able to use that to kind of propel this early game strat uh, that the panel was pointing out. And uh, well, Ori, uh, TA in itself is, I think Marsh just gets this for, oh, DUI, all right. That, man, that's actually legit hard to do with level one blinding light. That cast range is so small, but uh, he kind of timed it right that even against the decay, he's able to get that bounty rune. 
Well done by DY, making his move over there, getting the bounty rune, and it does look like we're going to end up with two apiece, TNT getting two, and Vici getting two as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch. I think that the thing that Cap and the panel was hitting on in particular was the tempo of this game, and right now kind of TNC trying to absorb the pressure that we know was going to come from Vici, and maybe that earlier than you would normally see Roche by virtue of Ori. Uh, with the coddle spam out of the melts. Yeah, and Ori is, uh, when I think Ori, I think Puck, and I think uh, Oh World Devour. So I would think he knows this matchup. But when you actually look at his numbers, I didn't know this. Templar Assassin's his most played uh, hero in terms of pro games, and it's also his most successful in terms of his heroes over 50 games, uh, with his highest win rate at like 67%. So something that the team uh, and himself are very confident in. Absolutely, and you look at this matchup so far, and. You know, it's going to be a little bit of a battle for regen, I'm sure, at some point. But already, OD getting a little bit of the better of Ori there. Although he is able to secure that range creep, it looks like. So something to keep our eyes on there, as already that Astral Spam is coming out. Down bottom, Gabby hiding away in the trees, getting the salve. Heal back up as the Yang PYW lane is keeping the pressure onto that CK. Yeah, things are a little awkward for March once you start running out of mana when you're playing this. <laughs> and yeah, I appreciate the keeping an eye on the mid lane because you know this any second here. Uh, things can go south with a couple uh, quick refraction spills. Ah, that bonus damage. Actually going to be tanking some of that underneath as the uh, Quick Rebs pushes back, burns through the refraction. Easy peasy, and Ori's back to CSing again. So far, so good out of TNC in these lanes. Top lane, KP on that Legion Commander, one of the few heroes that I think you feel somewhat comfortable against the early pressure that Jug brings. So yeah, Jug tends to, to like to go for these kills at like level three or something with a second point in the Blade Fury, but just early on, you're just able to basically press the attack yourself and just uh, either man up and fight, or uh, you might even just get like get to the boots before him. And uh, it's, it's not really a very scary lane. You can just see the constant spam out there. We'll get that range creep, but we'll have his other one denied by Ori as he comes out of the Astral. So more pressure early there as salves were brought out simultaneously. And the thing that I'm really curious about here is you talked about TNC not really having those heroes that can move around. In a certain way, it feels like Vici don't either. It's, it's kind of just more like trying to get ahead in the lanes. There aren't that many heroes that are going to be like roaming around trying to find kills, it feels like. Yeah, it's more like we can just push into towers and, oh, a sneaky pull there from DY just to reset this a little bit. It's like a, a small drag back on the lane. Even though he knows that small camp's going to die like right away, he's able to get some semblance of a pull off. And, oh, he's, he's trying to get real sneaky here. Oh, DY. All right, DY is trying work. to enhance the meta <laughs> with, uh, with that pull. That was, all right, he just gets a stack anyway. We're yeah. good. Easy peasy. Yeah, and you can see the Marana comes in, takes down that large creep. There's Armel again taking a bit of a beating, but will heal back up afterwards and get a little bit of all chat out there. You love to see it in the early goings of a best of five. The mental warfare between the two mids is something we're going to need to keep our eyes on. So far, at least, it doesn't feel like anybody's getting completely bodied, but maybe that will change as time goes on. There's the glyph, just interrupting the easy CS onto that range creep. The old uh, relax, grand final, game one. No one going too crazy. Nothing hyper aggressive. The old uh, six minute first blood, it feels like at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got like full health right now across the board. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's going to be more around possibly those bounty rune engagements that we've sometimes seen as DY is going to go. I'm not sure if this is for another pull here or just to try and stack it up, but it won't work either way. My biggest concern right now is that uh, Gabby's not winning this lane more. It's like, I, I don't necessarily think that you should, because I mean, Omni's obviously uh, a, a very fortuitous laner, but uh, the problem is that you've got uh, an Undying on your team. And when it comes to supports, Undying is like, first seven minutes, I'm supposed to really give a solid edge to my safe laner, and that, then I can be useless. Mm. But right now, you got to be kind of useful. Yeah, making things happen, trying to put the pressure on. And like you said, Gabby having a nice time of it as they continue to square up a little bit there in the mid lane. Ori gets more of those hits off. And they'll back out again, regen up, and head their own ways. But yeah, you look at it, TNC, all top three of the CS right now. And the main one that's suffering right now is that Jug, 15 and 1. Yeah, he is uh, DUI, just non-existent, because uh, it is Keeper of the Light, so he's doing the double stacks. He's even going to get away with the double stack and his bounty runes, so. Uh, because KP shouldn't be able to contest the Blinding Light. As, yeah, almost got the kill mid. 
But uh, this is because the, the Templar Assassin's dire side, so there's more pressure on the supports. I mean, it's before the ulti anyway for the TA, uh, but like obviously she can't really get stacks for herself on the dire side at all. Mm. So it, it's the responsibility of the Keeper of the Light in these games to do that as DY goes for another one of his cheeky little pulls. That was just a, another round of two bounty runes apiece. Juggernaut trying to regen up after that early pressure that was coming out onto him from the Legion Commander. But as we said, with Jug 2, with these pulls going on, eventually those creeps will catch back up to him, which might take a little bit of a time as or he's getting a lot of instant. <laughs> KP's in after the healing ward up top. He's oh they're blinding light and keeping him away. He just chased it all the way back to the wall. Dude, he doesn't care at all. They oh, come and in. Tim's they leaped take it for it. No, it expired. Oh man. <laughs> Well, frustrating going there, but KP is actually just comfortable uh, continuing to take these tower shots. That way the catapult's going to stay alive and they can keep the pressure on. Yuris is actually going to spin for this one. They have to go for the TP away. Oh, man, that was a spin and a blinding light. They were trying wow. to sync up there. Excellent offensive glyph there from TNC. They have just driven them out of this lane, and now uh, he's shrining up Yuris's with that Templar Assassin who's taking those stacks, and he's saying, all right, got to get back in here. We might need a rotation for my Rubik pretty soon. This is really rough, and a little bit extra time. KP can keep on tanking that tower while keeping the Catapult alive. Blinding Light pushback. Another spin. This time it is going to kill off the creeps, it looks like. So some more pressure is now going to be alleviated from the map. This is one of the benefits of having the Moran on your team, is you can just kill that other catapult. No such luxury on the uh, Beachy Gaming side. Meanwhile, Marge just <laughs> not really having to do a whole hell of a lot. He does get spotted leaving this area, so pretty likely that ward will get uh, found out here by the side of EG. Yeah, not likely oh. this one's going to be there for free, but it does obviously block out those ancients. PYW so. got a little greedy, only like some sort of a triple stack play there. Uh, timing must be extremely tight. Only gets two. Oh, he's actually yeah, that ward block. does block the ancient. So there you go. My bad. All good. Yeah. Face boots done for Jug. Yang also trying to get towards his. A thousand gold leads so far with no kills for TNC. Just doing a little bit of the out lane. But as the panel talked about, this lineup is more about hitting that timing when they want to push together. Um, which maybe comes at the cost of a little bit of laning advantage as KP going to run in. Thinking about a duel here as they do have Tim's in the area. Could chase for more if they want. But they're just going to be able to bully back Yuris. Force out another healing ward and back to the races. That was pretty tempting. Like, duel into arrow even this early. Felt like there might have been a, an opportunity there, but they're going to try and whittle him down a little bit further. And uh, one thing I've noticed is they've been kind of spamming the Chakra over and over onto uh, Uris to try and keep the healing ward coming back faster. Oh. Uh, a little bit of a neat interaction there. Yeah, knowing that that pressure is going to come onto this Legion. Yeah, it definitely feels like this Juggernaut is much more just about that healing ward in the mid game <laughs> when they were March is going her. back, and so his OBS got de warded that was blocking the Ancients. And then he, he just did the solo smoke play, and now he's trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> Yeah, the scan hits, so he knows that they're in here. He doesn't want to reveal that he's coming into the area. So having an inkling that Dude, it's going to be TA. He's going to go for the sneakiest backside century. Oh, he's Dude, doing it down a here. All right, perfect. Now it does. <laughs> That's really sick. Yeah. Like, the fact that he scans it, knows that the TA is there, and then heads around the other way so this one doesn't get dewarded. This is such a fun game for much. He doesn't do anything. Like, yeah. he is a CK in the safe lane. All he's doing is these little ward battles. And in the meantime, Tim's is taking away the rest of their jungle, able to block it out, shutting down this early pressure that they could come. Now, here's the problem, though. Oh, as uh, that, that's been a problem. Gabby, that's three heroes coming in. Oh, the slowdown. They're chasing Gabby in some trouble. March trying to save his core. Not going to happen. The nine minute first blood, as they might be able to find another not quite there for the kill. So now here's the one problem is that talking about how March hasn't had to do anything, his lane's so easy, the Sea Gang do it all himself. Probably shouldn't be an undying then, mm. one would think. Uh, maybe you could argue that they can't pressure him at all, and that's like, I mean, the Rubik was kind of still there the whole time anyway, so I don't know. Uh, March, uh, he likes this hero a lot, though. You know, the value in deaths even in the mid game, uh, the control over objectives with the tombstones, and the, the uh, sustain of the soul rip, so. We won't write it off completely yet just because it hasn't had the uh, most stellar first 10 minutes. Well, and the other thing that goes along with that is that, you know, you have this. Gabby other has hero. TP'd back in here. Oh alone, God. and they are not afraid. Gotta be careful there, buddies. 
Uh, another TP is coming in, though, now from Armel. Apparently, they want to fight. Mark is getting the bounty, though. Okay. Mark is just, this is his zone. I don't know how it keeps working out this way. Everybody TPs in to try and stop it, and March just picks up the bounties. He's able to back out of there. Rubik did steal Arrow on the other side of the map, it looks like, and we'll see if they actually decide to fully go into the punish on to March. It looks like they will be able to. Blinding Light pushback yet again. Soul Rip. Arrow not going to connect. One more punch. He's making him work for it. Space created. Oh, he couldn't get to the creeps in time. Bit, bit too much there. But yeah, it's, you know, not looking terrible at all for TNC right now. You know, you lose March a couple times, whatever. You got a very fun CK in the duel up top. Trying to make something happen. They cliff the wave also. And trying to keep that tower alive. Omni Slash comes out. Not oh, going to kill unlucky. KP. They take down the tier one tower top as KP runs away. Has phase boots and the TP. Looks like he is going to be able to make it. And in fact, might just take these ones on a bit of a walk. Yeah, he'll do his little dance away. Stolen arrow, though. Whoa, whoa, it's not over yet. PYW. Looking for the angle once he comes down the stairs. I don't know. Th there's not it. enough help, I don't think. Nah. Yeah. Stolen arrow is very nice. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have any points in Supremacy X. He's only level 6, so don't uh, get that bonus value. So, like, TA, these are my camps now. Uh, he does have it for arrowing this catapult, though. That would be the huge play right now. Unfortunately, he's out of mana. I had to use the Fade Bolt for the wave to draw it off instead. Well, and they're taking this tower yet again. One extra shot there, and he will throw out the arrow to take down that catapult. So that stops a lot of the pressure onto that tower. Well but played. at the same time, Yang takes the tower in the bottom lane, and uh, all of this freedom for Gabby. Suddenly he's just driven off the lane into the jungle. And Yang is the one who truly has the real space in this game, saving the point as well. No, he's not, actually. Thought he might be holding the Heavenly Grace uh, for the potential gank, but uh, yeah, just a 4-3-1. Very safe build for him. You, know, you can see that the Marana has been given a lot of space in this game also. She's, what is that, around 800 gold behind the Juggernaut right now, who really hasn't had the best of games after getting the pressure coming from KP. And she is going to pressure back Yuris a little bit here and gets a lane to herself because of that nice retreat ability. Chase forward, and Will-O-Wisp dropped down for March. Purification finds the kill, and now it's also caught KP as Yang brazenly walking forward and able to put the pressure on. Yeah, I think the panel was pointing out there's uh, not a whole lot of stuns in this game, uh, especially at the side of VG. They basically like Will-O-Wisp and then Rubix lift and hopefully if you steal something and then the eventual meld bash perhaps. So if they want to commit for a kill like that, they, they kind of have to just drop down the Will-O-Wisp. Uh, it's kind of like an early black hole. Yeah, it's only a two-minute cooldown, though, and it's just, you know, if you can secure a kill with it, it's great. Ideally, it's a core that you get and not just uh, March, who's definitely not the undying uh, this game as he makes up two of the three. Can be taking some damage so down far. bottom. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting, too, though, because normally you'd say, all right, let's punish. Let's try and make something happen. Willow List is down. But they can't really with these heroes. There's not really that much that they can do pressure-wise. And then when you're uh, looking for pressure coming from VG, you're thinking, okay, well, what's my TA doing? And uh, again, we have this Blink First TA. It seems to be more popular than the Deso First uh, TA in the, the majority of our games we've been having as of late. And whenever we see that, we think, okay, well, who are we killing? Like, let, let's oh blow some people up. Everybody running in right now. Four heroes just streaming towards KP. And they're really wanting to keep the pressure on for this tower, have Heavenly Grace for the spin save if he they need it. He is so tanky right now. It's really hard to put any type of pressure on the Yang. Bracer, Medallion. Four points, Heavenly Grace. Sorry, he shows up. Blink away, though. That's going to keep him from getting stunned by the CK. Light Shadow. Do they want to try and take this fight? There's a TD rune up top that's going to be claimed by Yuris, but only has that one point in Omni Slash. Looks like they want to try and keep this pressure on group yeah. together a little bit. So the last time they did this, they didn't have the TA with them, and uh, they were still waiting on the will o -Wisp. Now you can see three seconds left, perfectly timed from VG Gaming. The second will o -Wisp is up, they're ready to fight again because they know they need this. Oh, careful, careful. Moving in. Ori, he's got the blink. Chase forward Let looking for KP, light. but the will o -Wisp is not there. It only connects on to March. On the other side, KP is just walking away, and DY actually is going to die to the tower. So that ends up working out fabulously, and Armel trying to chase the big old ulti drop down with the overwhelming odds afterwards. They get demolished. Holy hell. Vici, what happened? The initiation was off. Uh, this is going to be one of those fights where you're going to see the start. 
again, and you're going to be, yeah, the replay will be fantastic uh, because right at the beginning, Marsh throws the tombstone up on the cliff. Uh, right. As you said, KP's kind of running north, and Connable's coming at like the worst possible angle for the way that KP ran. That was a perfect escape by him. Uh, if he tried to go back to the tier one, like tier two tower, he would have got caught inside, and then you have RML coming from the high ground. Oof. And RML, these early goings, Veil, along with the Kaya, just completely destroys them. And you said, you know, Tombstone, or rather Undying, not doing that much. He did a hell of a lot in that fight at the very least. Yeah, they, uh, they managed to drag the whole fight around that Tombstone, then the fight's just like not gonna happen anymore, and they start running away, so. Uh, and RML too, like how often do you get that like really early sub 15 minute good feeling fight for an OD player, right? Tends totally. to come a little bit later for him, but he already has the Veil, the Kaya, and he's working, he's, he buys the Yasha. So Jeez. a very aggressive build right now. And this is into the Blink TA. That is, a Blink TA's first fight is not supposed to look like that. You want no. that immediate explosion. And uh, instead, it was just uh, diving under the tower. Yeah, yeah, it was D.Y. <laughs> standing right next to Ori when he just blew up from the tower, and then the rest of his team followed suit. And that led into four bounty runes afterwards for TNC. Towers taken so far are mid and top for TNC. Vici still struggling as they didn't even get that mid-tier one tower. You need to figure out what to do now. Is 16 minutes in, they're 4,000 gold behind. DY will get the D ward there. It looks like on the high ground, takes it out. And, well, at this stage, like, you kind of need to wait for the next round of Willow Wisp, I guess? They have it back up on the coddle if they want to go again, but you might be just sitting licking your wounds for a little bit. Yeah, sitting back feels really bad this game, I think, if you're Vici. Yeah. You look at your heroes and you just think like, oh, guys, we, we got to do something. And uh, KP, how many pipe first agents have we seen this uh, tournament? Feels like almost every single time uh, I'm watching, that's what happens. And KP just looks at this game and goes, yeah, I'm going to get a Crimson guy. I have a Jug, I have a Templar Assassin. And Ori, with this blink first build, he's trying to rely on his hero's natural capabilities, and they're just getting shut out by KP with this item. And you can see that four hero rotation down towards bottom, trying to make something happen against KP, who's underneath the ward. They don't find anything. And he's just going to dance his way towards the lead. Yeah, he's got that taunt bound on his uh, move key or something. Just, just right click and taunts away. Like we said at the beginning, psychological advantage. You got to build I mean, it look, he's just farming in their face. All right, Yang is like, enough of this. That's my creep. Leave me alone. Meanwhile, the, the circle's drawn by uh, Gabby and Armel. The core is making calls here, saying, charge, head in to that dire jungle. March, bring the wards, buddy. Plant them down. March, where, where are the wards? Oh, this is, no one look. All right, he, he <laughs> handed them off to Tibbs. All right, it's fine. Give him the Marana. She's got the leaps. That's right. He needs those fantasy points. And March also sitting there just with a the buckler, right? Like everything, it's That's all uh, physical damage. Shout out to Puppy right there. That's what that is. Nobody does casual buckler, buckler like Puppy. All right, everybody from Beachy Gaming, with the exception of the Coddle, over towards that mid lane as they look set up to try and go for maybe another pressure onto this tier one tower. And guess what? <laughs> this it's looks the familiar. the exact same move. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my god, it's literally the same Marks thing. Marks is in the exact same spot. Guys, so we've done this before. So is Gabby. Uh-oh, running away. Tombstone up on the high ground. Can they get it out in time? It goes a little bit better this time for Vici, but they are kind of all grouped together. And now the buyback chasing forward, looking for Yang. Armel, he's going to hit him pretty freaking big as he drops it down onto both. Vici. Is this you a gotta simulation? do something new, my dudes. The chase, but the blink away, and Ori is going to be able to escape this time. What in the hell are I we thought watching? Production already <laughs> did the replay. I'm really confused right now. It goes better this time for Vici. Got to be said. And, well, that's that's not much uh, better. Well, well, they do Roche. Why not watch it again? <laughs> you guys were probably thinking, huh? I mean, they they kind of just did the same thing. I mean, I feel like we already said it. It feels good, KP dies right away. He's forced to buy back. So that, as you said, it did go a little bit better, but March again gets out the tombstone, and then the spike gets dragged down here, and RML, because everyone else was so nearby, like, he just gets the instant TP in, you know what right. I mean? Like, his TP is not delayed whatsoever, gets right into the fight, has perfect positioning for the ulti, has that veil too, and he just does so much for the team. And now they take Roche and they smoke out, looking to put the pressure right back onto Vici. I hear the revelry call as it comes, and Gabby wanting to find Ori, but 
but they're not quite going to be able to wrap around on there. KP and Sid gets the duel, but this is status resistance. Might be enough still to be able to find the chase down as Yang in some trouble, pulled in, and killed off. Uh, in behind, Ori will snag the other bounty, but they do have a sentry to go back and uh, grab some of this. Uh, we got a TA trap and an observer ward as March races before it expires. Still hit a minute. It's fine. Get in there in time. Oh, we got the arrow steal though. All right, potential play setup here. PYW, that's a four level four arrow from Tim. He is level twelve now. And the full aggression build. God, and I mean Armel on this OD. The more and more that I'm looking at this lineup, like. He's got pretty high int already. He's got that Kaya Yasha. The multiplier is now up to 12.4 when you factor in the spell amp. Like, this is a scary moment. This is really, really terrifying. Yeah, and he's uh, more firm than the TA. Yeah, that ain't good. We'll have to see what happens next in the 21 minute mark with Aegis still held by the Outworld Devourer. King is trying to farm up the camps. And I will say that TNC have started to try and push across the map and just shut Vici into that little corner of the, the area. Yeah, it feels like Gavi just kind of picks a lane and, and marches down it, and then, does, I mean, they can't contest them. Okay. They, they don't have any vision. They've been de-warding so heavily from the side of TNC that uh, Vici aren't exactly sure where they're moving whenever they come into their zone. They, they do have a couple nice ones left in here oh. now. But, uh, yeah, Gavi just walks to the tower, and now they will take it. Man, press the attack is so good this game, too, particularly with the OD. Just get that bonus, 140 attack speed on the Legion Commander, throwing it onto Armel. Tim's got worried about a potential blink up top from Ori. That's why he popped the Moonlight Shadow. Okay. Uh, a TA trap popped down next to him, so he just instantly uh, popped on himself just in case he got blink and gone on. So A worthy play. Now they go high ground with a Tombstone and a Catapult. They don't have the Marana, but apparently they don't need it. They have Sanity still if they wanted to use it, but Aegis. with the arrows TPing back, they're going to back out. 10 second BKB, they've got it all. Yeah, playing it safe though, at least for now, TNC, is it looks like they're going to retreat to try and clear out the rest of the tier 2 towers, but VG, you got to be careful walking up that hill. This is one of those moments where a, a courier getting killed is actually very annoying uh, for TNC, because they couldn't bring out any more wards to bring on these expeditions where they just kill that tier two tower and then start shoving up for tier three. You really want to both leave vision and also cover your tracks with sentries because they probably knew there was vision somewhere in that dire triangle, but they couldn't bring any more out for themselves. Still another 25 seconds till the courier comes back. Smoke comes out there onto Gabby, press the attack, so he still remains invis. Soul is not lifted. Unfortunately for VG, I mean, they kind of just got to hit the replay button again. Yeah. Uh, it feels like that's the best way for them to start fights. Y you know this uh, CK, at least you can help try and control the illusions with the Will-O-Wisp. Can they kill Armel? If they don't go on Armel, Armel will astral people for saves. Mm. If they go on Armel, he's a 10 second BKB. Yeah, and they don't have that like hard stun really. Like They, they pretty much need like a stolen arrow. Yeah. Which, you know, Rubik has been able to get pretty consistently, but TNC are just going to walk high ground again with this Aegis. And they're feeling very confident, getting some pressure on, force Vici back into the base yet again. Gabby says, get back. My purpose fulfilled. But Yuris will still get the farm on. But again, it's, I mean, Jug without in power as a core late game, it just it doesn't feel that great. Now with uh, 40 seconds left on the Aegis as VG, you can start thinking about uh, a time gank to maybe try and catch TNC as the Aegis is expiring. Or you can say they're still way too strong. We need to farm more. We need to like keep cutting waves. I feel like that's probably more of the attitude they're going to have. Right. As uh, Ori's getting up there. He's level 19, right? He's got these traps out. He can place the damage there. Oh, actually, he didn't take the plus 200 damage. He does have the move speed. So, mm. uh, But, you know, he can still cut waves uh, with the traps. Smoke out. Gabby doesn't quite have heart yet. This could be a decent moment for them, but eight seconds to the rush. So this is that timing they're looking for. Oh, Armel. And DY forward. is way back. Now maybe they could go on to Tim's here, who's kind of isolated, but the arrow goes out, the lift, it's going to go. Can they kill off in time? Yes, they will. Oh, now DY's chasing them too. Is he going to do it? Oh, DY, you're crazy. He's ah, thinking about God. it. Oh, Wiz <laughs> dropped down. They have to sleep, but the follow-up could come in just a moment as they turn to try and take this one down. Armel, so he can save Gabby, but he doesn't even need to. Gabby's full HP. Vici need to be careful. If they stick around, yeah, they could potentially get wiped. There's nothing good about this fight now. Uh, Ori. Only arrow. 
It misses. Oh, it's not going to connect. Yeah, they back out. And trying to find the four-second stun. Beating away into them. The duel on the other side. Finding Yang. Can they kill him off in time? It's looking like he's just going to get demolished. Omni Slash barely tickling there on any of the TNC heroes. Who are just too brawny, large, and in charge to have to worry. And the arrow gets tanked by the zombie. Oh, goodness. That was unfortunate. Yeah, a bit of a, I mean, they got that good pick off on the back onto Tim's. Not those ideal here. Obviously, they would love for it to be a core, but then DY just going in and trying to get that big ulti play. Oh, Yuris TP's out. Can he make the escape? Oh, the chase the punch. He gets the kill. Oh, God, it feels bad to be Vici this game. And Tim's trying to set up for an arrow, possibly, or PYW. They find that kill also. Or he's going to blink aggressively in, trying to find a turnaround, but the Guardian Greaves are popping. Now the duel for that kill onto PYW. Or he's just trying to get the heck out of here. In just a second, they might have Arrow back up again. And they do, so Ori, Ori's Ori trying to make big plays. Really TP away. They're going to buy back on the Rubik. See if they can make something happen. Break and blink. Looking for that Arrow. Not going to connect. But yeah, look at that. We got a uh, Tier 3 tower taken. And he's replaced it with a Tombstone. Oh, Decay. That's... Uh, not a whole heck of a lot. I mean, they're just zoning out Ori right now. <laughs> He's playing footsie with the Marana. You know, the whole base is going down. What are you doing? You this is tough. Nothing. I'm not sure what difference he's going to make when he gets here. Oh, he got the Radiant Courier. Boom. What a player. Dragging the creep wave. This is what Ori needs to do. Yeah, a fight is still not going to look very good for them. No. Checking for vision up there on the high ground as they retreat to take down the shrine on the top side of the map from the dire. Man, this is a good old spanking. And all of it pretty much going back to that, uh, the fact that the lanes weren't dominated uh, by, uh, not even the lanes, because like the lanes shouldn't be that dominated by VG, but just that first rotation, right? You expect it to go well when you look at these heroes. You think they have some playmaking stuff, they have ways you can see uh, them just like wiping the enemy team in a single will the wisp because we've seen that so many times mm. uh, in over the past couple of months with Keeper of the Light. But uh, flawless positioning from TNC, really. They just had five heroes ready for the battle uh, the first time. And then similarly, there were four already there with tier one. And they tried it again. And then RML just teepees in to clean up with a mop and bucket. Now they just wait for Roche again. I mean, this is uh, feeling like one of the simpler games for TNC so far. They haven't really been tested that much. Still, giving them around a 10% win probability from Dota Plus, as there's always the chance you get an overextension or something along those lines. But it does feel right now as TNC have a bit of a easier path towards victory. I mean, we, we haven't seen VG play TA in quite a long time, at least not in any of their recent matches. Right. And then to say that we also saw TNC doing this Keeper of the Light TA thing, you got to imagine they kind of have a pretty good idea on a lot of the yeah. timings that this hero is going to have, especially with the Coddle. Like, you know what Coddle wants to do. He wants to, like, run in and pop this ulti and force these really awkward fights when he's, like, level 4 blinding light way too early. Uh, and then same thing with the Roche, right? You know they want to do that little cheesy Roche to get it nice and early and try and sneak it from you. So TNC have just very much been on that. And now they're just doing the uh, the flowchart Dota, clearing out the shrines, waiting for the Roche spawn, which is going to be uh, on the longer end. Still another two minutes, nearly a, a full timer on this Roche. Ori trying to finish off that butterfly next. You did see Beachy run back away from their triangle because they saw the Hastron picked up by TNC. So, trying to play it out. Oh, well, don't look now, but there's a duel. Can they get anybody else here in time? Yes, indeedy duty. Armel cleans up Ori. Again, you can understand the desire to move out there, but they're getting caught all over the freaking map. Trying to TP away. Eurus, can they bring him down? Need some more punches, but it was never going to be enough. As they do manage to get out with the jug. Yeah, they're in an awkward spot. And uh, the gem there on KP, of course, helping to uh, make Ori's life of split pushing rather difficult, even by just running down lanes and killing traps. It really feels like Tim's has been so free this game to do kind of whatever he wants. He's just been like pushing out the side lanes, Both farming supports. it up. I mean, right? I mean that's the best feeling for an Undying because you can't do anything anyway. <laughs> once, once the laning stage is over, you're right? just a creep. He throws down Tombstone, tries to die at opportune moments. Another smoke up, and they run back in towards that triangle. They've got Vision down. They see Eurus 
And he just used spin. Oh, God, he got rooted by the H afterwards. He's not going nowhere. TNC, easiest kill of their life. Pretty much sums up this game. God. It just feels like they can't get a break. One by one, they're going down. Now, I think a lot of people were wondering if this was just going to be another stomp. I don't think many people expected it to be TNC was stomping. Jumps in and just punishing DUI there. Gabby with that blink. That was a pretty quick save from Yang. That was well done. Got him right away at the double spells. But now the range barracks will go down to the full lane in ruins here in the mid. And, well, would you believe it? TNC heading to the Roche pit. And, oh, it's going to be perfectly timed by sending in either himself or some illusions. And in they go. So That's there is dire vision. They know they're doing this. Are we going for a fight? That's pretty sick steal, or rather uh, play by, by Legion also, by the way, is they definitely are not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Where he didn't use another spell after the duel, and so he ends up giving that to Rubik. Like, all the other spells are better for Rubik there, I think. He'll, he'll figure something out. Look at that cast range. He's got an eighth of us. Wow. I mean, that's a long-range duel give damage from further away. I think that's amazing. <laughs> I think the melee heroes should be forced to stand at the end of the duel. Oh, okay. And then they just made. sit there while Rubik punches them like five times. Rubik could that punch them until the end it. of this game and he wouldn't kill one of these heroes. <laughs> that is probably accurate, actually. Could he kill any of these heroes by just constantly rifling them? Maybe March. Depends if March can press the buckler over and over. <laughs> then uh, other than that, I think the game would probably end first. Well, top lane, TNC. Want to try their luck yet again. Last time they got some racks. This time, there's a TA up on the high ground. Arrow not going to connect. All right, KB just going to blink in. They go on to Armel, bringing him somewhat low there. Wow, that was a very early BKB. Um, okay. BKB popped by Ori. This is feeling nigh impossible. And now he has a butterfly, but KB also has the blade pen. So... Sure, KP hits are gonna miss, but oh man, yeah, they seal press the attack, which is kind of nice one. Arrows, just he keep wants on that Omni though. out there, but they're gonna be able to find that duel on the other side. Gabby gets his ultimate off. They do have the Will O' Wisp out, but Armel able to walk outside of it. Pops the BKP, turning onto Yang. Oh, the Sanity's Eclipse. It's gonna be real tasty. He decides to turn onto it, but he's saving that one for the moment as Gabby gets the pull back in on a PYW. Just gets exploded like a pinata as they continue to hit away at these racks after the glyph. Vici do not have an answer in the world right now as they keep on building up that int. Ori turned upon yet again. They have the jump forward, double kill for Gabby. The Omni Slash bounces, but it doesn't do a damn thing. GG is called. TNC stomping on the faces of Vici. Yeah, just a, a dominant performance here from TNC. I mean, there really wasn't uh, too many sides to that game. It, it was all one-sided. Mm. It was all just TNC the whole time. Uh, to me, I mean, obviously, again, a strat that VG hasn't really shown uh, and looked a little bit out of their comfort zone, I would say. They, they didn't seem to be, um, like, preparing the TA for that first battle. Uh, whenever I see teams do this kind of a strategy, I feel like the TA needs to be, like, this monster. And a lot of it's focused around the TA. It felt more like VG were kind of like, these are our five-man heroes that are all going to, at five, run at the tower, and, and that's kind of our game plan. And right. Uh, I feel like they maybe just needed more stacks, more ancients. And yes, March was down there. He was blocking it off. He was being a real nuisance and, and stopping that because, again, they know what the strategy is. TNC are very aware of how you can make this uh, successful for yourself. So uh, well read by them. And uh, Vici are back to the drawing board. Maybe <laughs> ROTK <laughs> is uh, taking the hit on this one. I, I, I will say that like there, there are some of those plays, and we've seen a lot of them in this tournament, I feel like, where it's like one play that kind of defines the game and changes everything. Yeah. That run into mid where all... All five of them died, and they got the dual victory. That felt like it, it was, was a moment. It was so important. We got to see it twice. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see if we see the same thing or if Vici can come up with some new tricks in game number two. But for now, back to the panel. Thank you very much. A beatdown indeed. TNC, after going on 2-0 in the winner's bracket, well, they win game number one of this best of five. I'm joined by Cap and OD Pixel and... Yeah, it was kind of a beat down here. And I know, Owen, you kind of talked about this jug last I pick. Why? Yeah. And Why? Still, I guess we're kind of questioning. Yeah. It, it looked like they wanted to, you know, take pick up this tempo. The faster team kind of wins the game. But they were never on top that game at all, it didn't feel like. No, not at all. And I, as I said before, I don't know why you're picking a jug into 
No, like one of these, but all three of these cores. I'm pretty sure Legion, CK, and OD have Don't a pretty mind. happy time in a game. Well, as we just saw, you know, have a very happy time in a game against a Juggernaut. Like Jug, I mean, uh, I, I don't know why they went with the Jug last pick. Maybe y this is sort of testament to TNC and their bands. Like they forced VG into a position where VG felt that Jug was really all that was left. But even then, I, I kind of feel VG Gaming must have known themselves when they finished their draft with this Jug that this was going to be a hard game. It, 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 sure, maybe if you somehow won all the lanes and Jug sort of gets the phase drums or the first few items before like one item's done on any of the other yeah. cores, you're able to move around the map, take objectives with him, have that sustain. But if you're sort of the same level or behind as, as a core Jug against these three cores, you're not killing anyone with the Omni Slash. You're using Blade Fury to run away. You can't commit with the Blade Fury because you'll simply not kill anyone with the damage from the Blade Fury because of the heals with the with the press, the attack, because yeah. of the saves with the Astrals. And then obviously as soon as your Blade Fury ends, you're just incredibly vulnerable. And it's exactly what we saw here. Eurus ends the game 0, 4, and 2. That is your fifth pick hero your doing last. absolutely nothing. Your overall yeah. last pick. Yeah. That is the last pick. That's your overall pick. last pick, and it did nothing. You know, we've seen some... Great last picks from VG Gaming. I'm pretty sure this was their worst last pick we've seen from them the whole tournament. It feels like draft in general, Cap. I mean, you open with an yeah. Omni Rubik, which is a little bit different than we've been seeing. No, I think they definitely stumbled in their opening for sure. I, d I, d I just don't think there was like a ton of carries left. Uh, again, I could really only think of Lycan. Um, Lycan isn't even as good against OD as he used to be, but... I'm not. I, I don't. I'm not sure if that matchup at top lane goes bad because I know the Legion's favored against Jug, and I think the Legion's favored against Lycan as well. So you probably still would have been left in the same scenario where you almost lost three lanes. I think mid lane went kind of even. I think OD was a little bit farther ahead uh, in CS, but for the most part, it was pretty even. But uh, yeah, no surprise that like. Especially with the build that you want to go with OD. You want to go with the one four one build. That yep. build feels great against Juggernaut. Yeah. So no surprise that he's able to do so well. And then Omni Knight's not able to do as well against yeah. Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight is just a tough laner in general to go up against. Um, but, you know, Omni Knight is probably one of the better options. They but can. he still... You both have sustain. You know, he still did worse. Uh, I think that it was mostly comes down to the opening, though. I think that the, the TA pick... May not have been the best, but the the opening of Omni Knight Rubik. I don't even think that opening. I don't like it. Without the OD, yeah. is that strong, right? It's like telekinesis into the Omni Knight. Okay, it's it's a very like lane CS yeah, pressure. You know, you're focused on fate bolting and outlast hitting them, but uh, that's it. Just doesn't do a whole lot for you. And it felt like that Omni Knight wasn't backing up a hard carry. Meanwhile, you have Legion Pan backing up an Having OD. a great time. Yeah. yeah. He feels great about his uh, overall matchups. The oh, only yeah. thing was their lineup was going to be slow, but they played really well around the mid lane. March's positioning was great. His yeah, tombstone well. in that, that initial fight. And we, we all said, <laughs> we all said it in the green room, the first time Vici Gaming ran into that mid lane and just got dominated, the game Game's was over. over. It was just, it takes one fight like that and you're you're done. It's a yeah. lot of TA lineups like that, especially when you have a jug yeah. or not. Like, you don't really have, you have no scaling court. Maybe if it's a mag jug, obviously you have some scaling, but just well, jug TA. I mean, that's the thing, nothing. right? You know, jug seems to be sort of slipping to that level where it's only really viable if it. you do have the the Magnus, and and mm -hmm. even then, you know, it's it, it's still a, a, an opening or uh, a way that you play the game that can be dealt with. So it just seemed very weird to see them pick it up as as a fifth pick this draft, and yeah, something that I don't think that that's going to happen again. Uh, also, the the fact that TNC got away with getting the OD as early they did in the draft, and him having a, a pretty easy <laughs> unpunished game, like they <laughs> they didn't have a lineup that that could really deal with him it, it, when it came to I'm not turning up to fights. He would press the BKB, and there was and right nothing that would mess yeah. with him. You know, Cap said, you know, as an OD, you are the happiest when you can just turn up to a fight and just sit there Swag. hitting heroes. And he really could that game. They didn't l draft anything that that messed with Armel's mid game. And that was the first phase, and Armel yeah. was the only one who didn't die that game. Yeah. Seven zero four, and OD. We talked about it right multiple times. Like usually, middles are these kind of playmakers, but. When you get an OD, you are kind of the carry. I mean, they had two carries that farmed amazingly well. And mm. yeah, you see there, the scores, the items. It's just, I, it, it was just a very weird non Vici draft from Vici. I felt like while TNC, they got exactly what they wanted. So are you going to see any change in, in bands or picks here? 
Do you uh, think? They, I mean, I'm certain Vici Gaming won't do that opening again. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, <laughs> you probably won't ban any of those heroes, but you're not <laughs> picking them, that's for sure. Maybe you ban the Omni, who knows? That hero's still kind of weird to me. No. Uh, other than that, I I actually really would have liked to see that Draw Ranger strat for them, especially since they were going to go for the TA fourth pick. Oh, yeah, and they banned it themselves. Yeah, right I would have liked to see how that matches up against uh, OD. Yeah. Um... Besides I still think that, it Rubik just is like fine in an picks. opener, yeah. just with a better pairing than like a Omni centaur, Knight. right? No one would be mad at a, a Rubik centaur. Yeah, Maybe you don't want to pick centaur first, but it's still just a better lane. Yeah, I think something. they really wanted to save against the Marana arrow is what they kind of leaned into, yeah. right? They wanted an Abaddon, Omni, or Legion commander. So and yeah, you just have an Omni. Yeah, uh, the, I mean the OD was just such a great uh, like. I don't. I'm not sure if anybody else is like first twoed. Oh, uh, Yesterday, someone first. Okay, okay so yeah. someone That's did. That's the only time because it's been getting fifth banned. But yeah. if it's picked, it's in that first phase. Yeah. Most of the time, it's going to be a 5 6 ban. So if you can elevate it to first two against a good opener like that, I mean, that's just like a free opening. Yep. I and think it's well, really smart. Yeah, it was. We do need to go to a short break. Game number two, Avicii Gaming versus TNC, will be back very shortly.